Good morning, everybody. I just want to share with you my thoughts for today. Uh, my name is Kathy, and I'm the founder of Kingdom Way. It's a 12-week program, a weight loss program. It has been taught in churches and actually in different countries as well. And um, so I myself lost 111 pounds on keto 2006. January 2006 is when I started and actually it was Atkins induction in those days. And then I've had a few ups and downs and some life events and all that happened like most of us have. But um, I've transitioned a year ago to carnivore or just a very, very low carb uh, diet because the carbohydrates, they trip me up. The carbohydrates cause my blood pressure to go up, my weight to balloon, and my blood sugars to go up. So just trying to bring myself into line. See, I'm a Christian and I believe that I should look after the temple of the Holy Spirit. And so that's why I'm doing all of this. And so that I can be here for my family, my friends. And, uh, but I had some thoughts today and that's what I wanna share. So the thoughts have to do with my hand. Now, just look at your hand for a moment, right? We've got five fingers, or at least most of us do, some don't, that's okay. It's just an example. So the first finger I was thinking of, I thought that's the spiritual finger. So the spiritual realm connects us to a higher level of connectedness to God, to the spirit realm, and it connects us to all the other areas of our life. If we want to accomplish something, we have to work with all the areas of our life. So the spiritual, spiritual realm, when all areas are healthy, they can work together and they can do everything that they're supposed to do. So we need to reach our highest potential. We have to have a healthy spiritual life. And that's connecting to God. And the only true way to connect to God is through Jesus Christ. He's the one that made the way. He's like the door to God. So if we want to fulfill our plans and the purposes that God has for us, then we need to be healthy spiritually and keep that connection in a, in a good place. The next finger I want to address is this one, the Peter Pointer, the pointer finger. Well, the pointer finger points in the direction that we're going to go. So we'll call that the mind. You know, as you think in your heart, so are you. If you think you can, you can. If you think you can't, then you can't. So the mind is a very important area. It's going to tell you where you're going to go. If you start to think about negative thoughts, you're going to go into the dumps. If you're going to think about positive thoughts, you're going to think of higher places, of greater dreams, things that you can do, right? So that is Peter Pointer. Your mind points you in the direction that you're going to go. The next one here is, is your will. So you have your, your spiritual self, your mind, and your will. Now the will is the longest finger, as you can see. It's higher. It's very strong. Your will can be very strong, but without the other fingers, it's not really going to accomplish all that it could accomplish. So the will alone will not be enough to accomplish, to fulfill your destiny and your purposes in life. You need more than just your will. The next one we'll look at is our emotional finger. Oh, this one trips us up a lot. You know, uh, our emotions have to do with our feelings and our relationships to other people, right? That's what emotions are all about. Our relationships to each other. And if we're going to have a strong, healthy self, then we need to have strong relationships around us. People who are like-minded, people that can build us up when we're weak, people that we can support when they're weak, right? So strong relationships, people that can encourage, but people that can rejoice with us when things go great in life, that they can just rejoice in whatever's happening. Now, our feelings are really a great guide 
as to what's happening inside of us. But they are not a good compass. So don't let your feelings determine what's going to happen. We want our higher self to determine what's going to happen. And that's going to involve all the other areas of our life, right? Things that trip up this area very often, it, it trips up everything in feelings, is when we're hungry, when we're genuinely hungry. And not just hungry for food, for nutrition, but when we're hungry for a relationship, when we're hungry for a connection with God, when we're hungry in so many different ways. But mostly I focus on the physical because it affects everything, right? So when we're hungry, when we're angry, when we're lonely, when we're tired, you can't accomplish the things that you want to do. Or if you're bored, you're going to have to think of something else to do that's going to be healthy, that's going to be good for you or good for someone else, right? Now, the way we want to live is in gratitude. There's an old song that I knew before and it was called Count Your Blessings. Name them one by one. I have a little sign that I hang on my door of my apartment. And that's what it says. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. Right now, stop for one moment and think about that. What are you blessed with today? What are your blessings? And when you think of that, it just changes everything. So gratitude. Gratitude determines your attitude. Right? As you think, so are you. And it just changes your emotions. I walk out in the morning and I go to work and I hear the birds and I think, wow, aren't they beautiful? Aren't they beautiful? Just the sound of the birds or the sky. It's really kind of a dreary day today, but it's beautiful. I can still hear the birds. There's so many things out there. So many things in here, my life, my apartment, my relationships, everything is just, uh, it depends on where you focus. Where you focus is where you go. So let's put our focus in a good place, all right? Now, lastly, we're gonna talk about the body. Now, the body is not this finger, the little finger. It brings balance to life. You wanna hold a teacup, you know, or whatever, like it, but it brings balance. You know, if I wanna pick up something, it's. It's got that balance to it. So it's important, but it's not the everything. So if you have areas of your body that don't work like they should or they're not, they don't exist, that's okay. But we wanna have our best selves, right? The healthiest self that we can be. So our bodies, that's a small finger and um, there's an old saying that says, you are what you eat. Well, think about that. What do you eat? Do you eat foods that are actually bringing strength to your body, that are nourishing for your body? If you're gonna deal with all these tiny micronutrients with no real solid food, it won't be enough. So I'm not a vegetable hater. In fact, some people do very well, and that's fantastic. I'm glad they do, but not everyone does. But everyone needs to have something that is solid, that's going to help them to really, really grow. If we want to build muscle, not just muscle physically, but we're talking about physical, we need to, we need to eat meat. That's the bottom line. We need to eat animals. That's the whole food production cycle, you know, is animals. And um, animal meat will actually nourish every cell in your body. Whereas if you're going to eat celery, it's just not going to do that. In fact, it's going to have some detrimental effects if you overeat celery. But you will never overeat meat. I think of this story. Now, it's back in the Old Testament, 
and you've got the children of Israel and they're out in the wilderness and there's nothing to eat. So God gives them manna, which is supposed to be the perfect food, the perfect bread from heaven. <clears throat> but we can't, it wasn't satisfying. It wasn't satisfying to the children of Israel. They wanted more than that. They wanted meat. So God gave them meat. God gave them meat and meat and meat as much as they wanted until they ate and they threw up because they ate too much. See, meat, though, is satisfying. You get to a place and you don't want any more. That's it. So you'll never overeat. Not really. You can't really overeat because if you overeat, it would just come right back up because you just can't overeat in meat. Whereas in the vegetables, it wasn't satisfying. And <clears throat> so animal meats, they will nourish the body, every cell. And it should be a part of every healthy diet, if not the foundation to every healthy diet. And for some people, it is the only diet, depending on your own me metabolism, on, on where you're at, whether you're metabolically healthy, whether you're getting older and you don't require all the carbs. I don't know as far as that goes. <coughs> the bottom line is when all five areas of your life are healthy, if they're in a healthy place, then you can become your highest, your healthiest self. And you can do all that you are destined to do. Excuse me for the cough. <coughs> That's just leftover from COVID. Anyway, you'll reach your highest potential. You will truly be healthy in your spirit and in your soul, which is your mind, your will, and your emotions, and in your body. So the conclusion to my message is just to trust God and do whatever he tells you to do. And think about that. Think about your health. Think about those five areas. And for you, maybe too, you want to eat some meat today. Enjoy your steak. Bye for now.